So, many of you would have come across a relative in your family, elderly relative, who had fallen down and fractured her hip. And this might have led to a hip replacement. So, elderly people, fractures in elderly people of the hip joint are the commonest causes of hip replacement. Welcome to this live session on hip replacement. Today, I will discuss the main indications for hip replacement in India. To begin with, one should have a clear understanding of the location of the hip joint. It is located at the top end of the thigh bone or femur. The joint is formed by the ball shaped head at the top of the thigh bone joining with the hemispherical socket in the pelvic bone. It is a ball and socket joint. The surfaces of the joint are lined by a protective layer of articular cartilage. Damage to the surface of the cartilage or the bones can lead to hip pain which may need a hip replacement. Many patients think that they have hip pain but actually they have got low back pain and they confuse this low back pain or buttock pain for hip pain. The form of pain or low back pain or buttock pain usually arises due to spinal problems. Hip pain on the other hand is a deeply located pain in the front, side and back of the hip joint. It can spread along the inner side of the thigh and up to the knee and so many people may present with actually knee pain whereas the problem is actually arising from the hip and this is common in children, young children who have uh, certain developmental diseases or a collection of fluid in the hip. Initially, the gait may not be affected, but very soon as the severity of the disease increases, gait is restricted markedly. The pain in hip disease is quite severe to, and it becomes very severe very soon, unlike knee joint arthritis where patients take a lot of time and uh, their gait is affected only late. So that's the main difference with hip arthritis and knee arthritis. People cannot put up with hip arthritis for a long time and the patient becomes incapacitated very soon. And therefore they seek intervention in hip disease. So having just mentioned about fractures, now let's see the more common in India. At the top of the list is a condition called avascular necrosis. Many of you would have developed a skin condition or an eye condition or maybe suffering from asthma which might have required steroids. Recently, I just came across a man, an elderly man who was in Australia and required steroid treatment for a skin condition. He developed avascular necrosis of his knee. So avascular necrosis is a condition in which the blood supply to the ball shaped head at the top of the thigh bone gets cut off. So I'm just showing you a model of the hip joint. This is the ball shaped area here and the blood supply travels from here and it just gets cut off in this portion like um, the river being choked off and the blood supply to this portion dies off and this portion, the bone here undergoes death. So that's what the condition, that's what the definition means, bone death. As the underlying bone dies and collapses, the support to the overlying cartilage in the head of the femur is lost. And finally, the cartilage also breaks down, leading to arthritis and hip pain. The main causes of avascular necrosis, as I mentioned, are very commonly, this is known as secondary avascular necrosis. It is due to steroid intake, alcohol intake, Gaucher's disease is a kind of a storage disease. Sickle cell anemia and other diseases, these are not so common in India, but they are common in Africa and uh, Middle East. Um, then the other cause, leading cause is an unknown cause. It may be due to a coagulating or blood disorder. Hip replacement in avascular necrosis becomes necessary in the last stages of avascular necrosis. Invariably, patients with avascular necrosis require kind, some kind of surgery. Initially, they can be treated with biological treatments or core decompression, but in the end, they all need a hip replacement. The next more common condition in India is among women. It is rheumatoid arthritis. 
as you know rheumatoid arthritis is a systemic autoimmune disease which affects all the synovial joints including the hip patients in the age group 20 to 40 are affected hip replacement is necessary to relieve pain and restore mobility ankylosing spondylitis this is a condition which affects mainly men in the middle age group this is a systemic disease involving the spine and the peripheral joints it is characterized by a progressive stiffening of the spine leading to deformity and bony fusion of the hip joint pain and stiffness require total hip replacement to restore mobility other non traumatic or non injury related conditions of the hip requiring a hip replacement in india are developmental dysplasia of the hip neglected patis disease slipped capital femoral epiphysis which i mentioned earlier post infectious arthritis post tuberculous arthritis is pretty common in india and then i am seeing this rare now quite frequently dwarfs short stature people they have got a condition called spondylo epiphyseal dysplasia in which the development of the spine and the hip and all the joints is affected and they require hip replacement traumatic conditions requiring hip replacement are as we mentioned earlier in the beginning fracture of the neck of the femur fracture of the head of the femur this is not so common it can happen after a fall from a horse riding or during an accident or a motorcycle accident then fractures of the acetabulum fractures of the acetabulum can occur in the elderly even at the age group uh, while at home from domestic falls but usually occurs due to high velocity injuries while traveling in a car it usually affects the passenger of a car when their knee collides against the dashboard as the car comes to a sudden halt fracture of the acetabulum then you have neglected dislocations of the hip joint this is pretty common in india uh, in the construction business laborers uh, when they are uh, standing on a scaffolding suddenly they slip and fall down and dislocate the hip the hip may be put back if they get prompt medical aid but later on they are at risk of developing as i said avascular necrosis uh, of the hip then we have non united trochanteric fractures and avascular necrosis of after fracture of the neck of the femur all these conditions are pretty common in india bangladesh pakistan and the developing countries including africa except for the traumatic cases needing a hip replacement which occurs in the elderly age group most patients requiring a hip replacement in the developing world fall in the and also sometimes in the uh, developed world fall in the younger or middle age group in the developed world developmental dysplasia is a common condition it occurs in ladies and they require hip replacement sometimes early, earlier in the 20s now the patients when i am telling them that they require a hip replacement they ask me doctor what happens during a hip replacement we remember do you remember the anatomy this is the hip joint first we have to get at this place because it is situated deep down under the belly and the pelvis and at the top of the thigh so we have to expose the hip joint by an incision usually at the side i prefer at the back i perform an incision i i, I place my incision at the back but sometimes it can be done in the front also then the surgeon will remove the head this head head portion and the neck portion by cutting it in the neck region and then places a metal prosthesis known as the femoral component in the shaft of the thigh bone he then scrapes the damaged cart lining of the socket and places an acetabular component in the socket a trial reduction is done using trial components to check for stability and range of movement after being satisfied the real components are fixed in their respective positions using bone cement or by getting a snug fit with uncemented components the incision is closed and the patient is observed for a few hours and returns to his room so this is a model of a hip replacement you can see here is the right hip this is the thigh bone and inside this there is a small prosthesis which goes into the upper part of the thigh bone and then you can see sideways it has got a ball shaped top 
and then you have the socket which is fitted inside the hemispherical cavity this is the acetabulum that is snug fit the socket is fitted in this is made up of polythene in this case and this is metal here and that is the model of a hip replacement so now the question is what are the types of hip replacement I said that the hip has to the components have to be fixed in the bone. There are two types of hip replacement, cemented and uncemented. In the former, the implants are fixed to the bone using bone cement. Bone cement is a chemical substance known as polymethyl methacrylate. When it is mixed with the liquid, it sets and uh, it uh, permeates into the interstices and cavities of the bone and the component is locked. Fine, uh, firmly in place. There is no chemical bonding between the cement, but a tight uh, interstitial fit. The other type of hip replacement is an uncemented hip replacement in which the fixating surface is actually welded or forged onto the component, the layer and the surface of the components. There are beads or there is a rough finish or the components have got a triangular fit. A, a triangular lining which uh, gets a firm fixation in the thigh bone and also in the socket. These are the types of, uh, uns there are several types of uncemented hip replacement. So, what are the indications? I mentioned two types of hip replacement. What are the indications for the two types of hip replacement? Cemented hip replacements are usually done for elderly people, which I mentioned earlier, when the main prime, the prime concern is to mobilize the patient so that they don't develop problems while lying down like pneumonia, bed sores. They can be, when the hip is cemented in place, the patient can be mobilized immediately the next day and can be made to, steps, uh, made to take a few steps in the ward. This will prevent all the complications. So, cemented hip replacement now is usually reserved for elderly people with fracture of the neck of the femur. Uncemented hip replacements are usually done for younger people and middle-aged people in whom the bone stock is reasonably good so that we can rely upon the bone stock to get a tight, tight press fit. However, after an uncemented hip replacement, the patient has to remain partial weight bearing for a period of six weeks so that the hip the components get integrated with bone by bony ingrowth into the surface of the hip. And then after six weeks, for six weeks, the patient has to remain, uh, use crutches. And after that, he can start walking normally. So, Many people, as I said, they develop uh, uh, their bilateral hip disease or both the sides are affected. So if hip replacements are to be done, then we have to follow the same protocol. One hip, then we have to let the hip settle down, get integrated by osseointegration integration for a period of six weeks. Wait till this period is over, till the time the patient is mobilizing with crutches. After that, the second hip can be done. So it's usually done after six to eight weeks. What are the implants made up of? These implants are usually made up of metal. The stem portion is usually made up of metal. At the top, there is the round portion, which is called as the bearing portion. That can be made up of different materials. Usually the commonest one is a metal uh, liner, metal ball, metal shaped ball. This portion is uh, usually metal. The stem portion is usually metal. It may be either titanium or cobalt chrome alloy or whatever. But the top is usually made up of a cobalt chrome alloy. It's not made up of titanium. The bearing is never made up of titanium in the hip joint. It can be made up of oxenium or it can be made up of ceramic. And on the socket side, you have again a plastic socket. We saw the plastic socket in the model of the hip joint. Plastic sockets were the original ones used. Before that, there were metal sockets used. So there is a usually in young and middle-aged patients, a metal liner is first fixed in. It is usually fixed with screw fixation or with interference fit. Inside the liner, the surgeon positions the, uh, sorry, the first one is a shell and then the liner. The liner is usually made up, can be made up of ceramic, plastic, 
they were made up of metal before now but metal uh, liners have been given up metal on metal lip replacements are a thing of the past decade so what are the i have mentioned so many types of hip replacement what are the indications for the different types of bearing materials young ceramics are pretty hard structures nowadays modern ceramics they don't crack they can last for 20 to 35 years and therefore they are reserved for younger people in the 20s uh, who have to survive a long time after hip replacement so ceramics are usually reserved for younger patients in the, in the middle age group say from 30 to 50 uh, one can use metal on cross linked or ceramic on plastic metal on cross linked plastic or ceramic on plastic in middle and older age patients some patients would like to know what happened to minimally invasive alternatives like hip resurfacing at the turn of the century that is the 21st century there was a sudden um, fashion for a minimally invasive procedure called hip resurfacing. Uh, this procedure has been largely given up now, like all temporary scientific fancies, which we come up without sufficient long-term evidence. Um, hardly uh, any hip resurfacing are done. And in India, there are always very few indications for hip replacement, uh, hip resurfacing in India. Most patients who require hip replacement in India are patients with avascular necrosis. And in these patients, hip resurfacing has found to have give lot of, uh, given a lot of complications. Many patients from India who rushed to have uh, get a hip resurfacing in uh, the uh, early part of this uh, first decade, 2000 to 2010 are now rushing to get their hips revised and there are long-term uh, litigations going on with uh, medical and surgical implant companies so they're all getting revisions done so hip resurfacing is out and hip, resurf hip replacement is the steady one which is still uh, stands the test of time in hip replacement itself there is a minimally there was a minimally invasive uh, option it was there in India until very shortly up to 2012. Uh, that was known as a short stem hip replacement. I did the last case in um, maybe in June 2012. But after that, the companies have pulled it out of the market because uh, they didn't see a great demand. Uh, and therefore, short stem hip replacements are out. This short stem hip replacement was well, usually and was beneficial for younger patients who needed a hip replacement in young age as the femoral component was any, only embedded for about two inches like that you know just a little bit the, like the size of my middle half of my middle finger only that much amount was embedded in the stem and the femur had to be prepared only that much the whole neck of the femur the neck this is up to, up to the neck this could be preserved and the hip and the, the hip was embedded only up to here. Only up to here, the neck had to be cut, not unlike this case where the neck is cut at this level, basal level. So short-term hip replacement, unfortunately, due to uh, not due to any uh, scientific principles, but pragmatic principles, the companies have withdrawn it and they're not available. There is one, but, but it's pretty expensive and patients generally can't afford it. So, is hip replacement safe in patients with comorbidities? We talked about elderly patients. Uh, elderly patients, uh, they usually have got many comorbidities and therefore they are safe and uh, they have to be done. There is no other go, there is no other alternative. They are safe provided the surgeon recognizes the comorbidities beforehand, gets specialist opinion, investigates them and gets expert opinion to treat them in order to render the patient fit for a major surgery. Some medicines, usually people are taking, uh, elderly people are taking blood thinning medicines uh, like clopidogrel or aspirin. They will have to be stopped a week before surgery and can be continued soon after under the supervision of a cardiologist. How and when are patients mobilized after hip replacement? We saw at the beginning that elderly patients who undergo uh, cemented hip replacements can be mobilized on the very next day. Full weight bearing. 
That is, they don't need cuts. They may have some discomfort and they may have to use a walker initially, but very soon they can, within a week or 10 days, depending upon the status of the patient, they can be mobilized full weight bearing very soon. However, we have discussed about placements. These patients may have to be, uh, they have to use uh, crutches for a period of six weeks and uh, then they can be mobilized normally. That is, they can put full weight on it. How long we are talking of now artificial joints? So patients ask, how long do these implants survive? The standard hip replacement, which is made up of metal and plastic, normal plastic, not cross-linked plastic, it can survive for 15 to 20 years. Metal on cross-linked plastic or poly polythene, these uh, implants can survive for 30 years. So if a middle-aged patient comes and requires a hip replacement, he doesn't have to worry for 30 to 35 years. We talked about ceramics. Ceramics can survive for 30 years. So what is the risk of uh, a revision? We talked about 30 to 35 years survival rate. So some patients who are young at the time of the first hip replacement will naturally ask if they outlive the implant, when then would they require a revision or redo hip replacement? Well, the honest answer is yes. When we talk about revision hip replacements, patient asks, okay, sir, uh, so I will be elderly. What will be the problems associated with revision hip replacement and how do you overcome them? Uh, we said that uh, hip relies upon integration of bone. And so when the hip has to be revised, the old components are removed and naturally some bone which is adhering to the component will come out. The cement has to be removed and therefore there is bound to be some bone loss. Bone loss is the usual problem with revision hip replacement. This can be overcome on the femoral side by getting a fixation in the distal part of the femur. That is going further down the shaft of the femur instead of at the top going further down, getting the purchase down in the thigh bone or changing the size of the hip joint. Say for example, if the initial uh, hip is only about uh, six or eight, maybe the size of uh, this little finger, then you can enlarge it to a larger component, which is the size of a middle finger or two fingers and thumb. So you can enlarge the size of the prosthesis to get a tighter fit. In rare cases, you may have to use a graft or you, have to, you may have to pack the cavity of the thigh bone with the um, cancellous bone derived from the bone, uh, obtained from the bone bank. This is called as impaction grafting. Very rare cases, an allograft component, that means a whole femur bone along from a cadaver inside which a hip implant is put in can be used. This is known as a allograft component and it is rare used in rare cases. On the socket side, on the socket side, we can make up the bone loss with cages, augments and bone graft. Uh, so you can see examples of uh, these on my website, which I have to remind you, is www.hipsurgery.in. I use bone graft from recognized bone bank because in these bone banks, uh, everything due process has been followed. They, there is no risk of any HIV or any viral infection, uh, unlike the routine bone banks where, which are here. Um, they just take a head of femur and put, a, put it in a, in a jar of formalin and they say they are using bone. Uh, their patients are at risk of developing infections. So it is better to use bone graft from a recognized bone. Um, when there is a bone deficiency in the acetabulum, I use metal augments for difficult cases for, of acetabular deficiency. Some patients ask me, young patients, if I have treated difficult and complex cases and which they too have. I have treated many cases of difficult situations like hip dysplasia due to septic arthritis of infancy, developmental dysplasia of the hip, protrusion acetabuli. That means the socket gets protruded inside the hip. The socket, this is the socket. It goes deeper and deeper. Instead of staying here, it goes deeper. So this is known as a protrusion acetabuli. 
and uh, it's pretty difficult to do. Uh, I've operated on young patients with Protrusio acetabulae. Then post-fracture arthritis, multiple failed revisions done elsewhere. Uh, also, I have done, I've done a 90, 80, 85 year old lady who had two failed hip replacements done elsewhere. Uh, despite that, she was bedridden. And after the third revision, she was able to walk. And she's now quite alive and quite happy. You can find testimonials of such patients in my website mentioned above, that is hipsurgery.in. Okay, friends. So that's all we have the time for today. Please visit my YouTube channel, which I'm just showing you. Alam Pallam Venkatachalam. I'm just showing it the other side also. Uh, so Google that in YouTube. You will find my YouTube link. Kindly subscribe to that to keep abreast of all the latest uh, testimonials, hip news, etc. I'm showing you the shorter version of that. A.K. Venkar. Don't get confused. There are similar sounding uh, names, but Alam Pallam Vengarachalam, the longer one, is the best bet. My practice is known as the MJRC Clinic. YouTube, you will find it. As you find it in Facebook, LinkedIn, everywhere. I have a business page called MJRC Clinic in my Facebook business pages, as well as in my LinkedIn business pages. So this is the link MJRC. Google this in, M in Facebook or type this in Facebook, MJRC Clinic. You know, if you reach my uh, website, you will find an email there and uh, you can send me a mail to get an appointment. So thanks for watching. If you have elderly patients or if you are in need of hip replacement, I hope this information was useful to you. See you next time.